Welcome to Kingdom Living Ministries, where our vision is knowing God, loving people, and making disciples. We trust this week's message will be a blessing to your life. Enjoy the teaching ministry of KLM. Let's pray. Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. Thank you for this opportunity to share your word with your people. I thank you, Holy Spirit, you and I together are able to change the world. I ask for supernatural divine utterance that I may boldly make known the mysteries of the gospel. Grant unto your people the spirit of wisdom. Just lift up your hands. The spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you that, that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened, that we may know what is the hope of your calling and what are the riches of your glorious inheritance in the saints. What is the exceeding greatness of your power towards us who believe? Thank you, Father, that our lives are forever eternally changed by Jesus, the Savior, the Son of God. Thank you that we're changed by the Holy Spirit that dwells on the inside of us. Spirit of the living God, make us more like Jesus. Come on, let's ask God, the Holy Spirit, God, the Holy Spirit, to make us more like Jesus. Go, it's just a few moments. Just ask the Holy Spirit to make you more like Jesus. Holy Spirit, make us more like Jesus. We want to be like the Son of God. We want to be like God manifested in the flesh. Make us more like Jesus. Oh, we cry out for him. Our, we're, we're hungry this morning to be more like Jesus so that we can have perfect, unhindered relationship with the Father. Help us to be the change that we long to see in the world. God, I thank you. Do more with our lives. Lord, take the rest of our lives and do what you will to change this world. Help us. Holy Spirit, help us to be like Jesus. Help us to execute the will of the Father. Spirit of the living God, you are given to us so that we can be like the Son of God, so that we can fulfill the will of the Father. Oh, Lord, we want to fulfill everything that you have for us in the name of Jesus. Spirit of God, show us what's hindering us. What is the gap? What is where we're missing it that we're not? conforming to, to Jesus. Remove that thing that has hindered us from revival, that has hindered us from change. Spirit of the living God, I pray that you would change us. Let's just take a moment and pray for change. Holy Spirit, change us. Father God, change us by your spirit. Change us by your word. Change us. Remove the blinders. Remove the darkness. Remove that which has hindered us. Remove the giants. Give us the wisdom to kill every giant that is in our lives. Every giant of flesh and selfishness. Every giant of debt. Every giant of sickness and disease. Every giant of procrastination. Oh, Lord, change us, oh God. Lord, growth, we are declaring that growth is now. Even grow this now. So grow us now. Grow us up. Grow us out. Grow us. May growth come. Oh, Father, let everything about us grow. Grow in health. Grow in wisdom. Grow in favor. Grow in strength. Grow in relationships. Grow is now. Oh, Holy Spirit, help us. Oh, Lord, we need growth. We need change. Change us, oh God. Change our mentalities. Change us. Our, change our lips. Change our words. Change our worship. Change us, oh God. Change us, oh God. We want to be like Jesus. We want to please you. We want to walk with you. Change our walk with you. Change our, the way we see things. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We are in desperate need of change. As co individually, collectively as a church, uh, as, as Americans, uh, as, as people that are, li that are living in this world, as people that are living in, the s dealing with the systems of this world, change us, oh God. 
Change us, oh God. Say, Lord, change me. Lord, change me. Oh, change me, oh God. Make, may, may we be changed from glory to glory and from strength to strength. Change our attitudes. Change our perspectives. Change our hearts. Change us, oh God. Remove everything out of us that is not like you. Deal with those areas that we've have we've we've put up walls and we've we've even sealed those those doors. Go into those areas and remove those things that should not be there. Deal with us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you and give your name glory and honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are um, going to talk about um, in light of what Pastor Sam shared with us, our, um, our mark, his world. Uh, I want to build upon that. So today I want to talk about becoming a world changer. And I say becoming a world changer. As believers, we have the opportunity to change the world for the benefit of humanity and the glory of God. There are some people who change the world for the negative, but we want to change the world for the positive. We are world changers. Say, I'm a world changer. I'm a world changer. Uh, we are, t- say, I'm a history maker. I'm a history maker. We are changing the world. We're changing history. And God is interested in, in us becoming like his son, Jesus, so that we can change the world. Jesus changed the world. Let me, let me just mention a couple people that have changed the world. Mother Teresa changed the world. Billy Graham changed the world. Martin Luther King Jr., civil rights leader, changed the world. Nelson Mandela changed the world. Um, first president of um, Democratic South Africa in 1994. Sojourner Truth changed the world. Helen Kaler changed the world. Um, um, Thomas Jefferson, author of Declaration of Independence, changed the world. Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln changed the world. He was American president during the Civil War, Civil War and helped end slavery. Thomas Edison changed the world with a, a been an inventor and a businessman. Moses, leader of God's people, delivered them out of Egypt. Esther, queen who delivered God's people through her beauty and wisdom, changed the world. The, Mary, the mother of Jesus, changed the world by obeying God and carrying the Savior of the world and raising him up to fulfill the God-given call on her life, on his life. Amen. So we can be in this great number of world changers. Amen. You may not think that you're a world changer, but you have the seed of change inside of you and you can change the world. You have the seed of greatness. Amen. (laughs) Say, I have the seeds seeds of greatness. greatness. Let's go with me to um, go with me to second. uh, Actually, first Timothy, first Timothy, first Timothy. Thank you, Lord. Become a a world changer. God wants to change this world. We should we should make the world better than the way we found it. I really believe that with all my heart, soul and mind. First Timothy, chapter four. First Timothy, chapter four. Let's look at verse six. Actually, let's just start with six. Um, First Timothy chapter four, verse six. If you put these things before the brothers, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, been trained in the words of faith and of the good doctrine that you have followed. I mean, we need to be trained in the words of faith. It says having nothing to do with irreverent and silly myths. There's some myths out here and we have to guard against conspiracies and and the urban legends. Just guard against silly myths. Rather, train yourself for godliness. Who's doing the training? We train ourselves. So if we're going to change the world, be a world changer, we got to train. That means we're untrained, undisciplined. We must discipline ourselves for godliness. I've said this before. Um, there's, there, there aren't a lot of people who are 
been trained for godliness. There's some people been trained for ungodliness. Let, let's, let's, let's go against the tide. Let's, let's become trained in godly living, becoming like Jesus. For while bodily training is of some value, I mean, going to the tra training your body, exercising is profitable. Come on. <laughs> if you're going to change the world, you got to change your body. <laughs> you know, otherwise you're not going to have the strength to be to fulfill this great mandate to change the world. For bodily training is of some value. It, it didn't say that it was wrong to train your body. But godliness is of value in every way. How? As it holds the promise of life uh, for the present life and also the life to come. So bodily training is only profitable for here. <laughs> it, it, it will not impact your eternity. So to train your body it's going to profit you here. It's going to help you live longer or healthy or have the quality of life. But godliness, on the other hand, will profit you here and in the life to come. It has a double blessing, a dual blessing. Are y'all with me? If I train my body, I'm going to be good on this life. But if I train in holiness or godliness, I'm going to be good in this life and the life to come. That's what Paul's telling Timothy. He says this is this said the sin is trustworthy and deserving of all full acceptance. For this, to this end, everybody say to this end, he says, we toil and strive. There, there's, there, he, he's engaging in the work, some type of work, some type of striving. Because we have our hope set on the living God, and notice he has his hope. Hope is a powerful thing. Hope, to have hope, we need to pump hope into people. There's hope. What is hope? Hope is a, an expectation, a confident expectation. There, there's power in hope. There was a young man by the name of Jesse Jackson who went around preaching hope. Um, there's something about hope. Hope is a powerful force of grace. We, have, we know from 1 Corinthians 13 that says um, a faith, hope, and love. And the greatest is love. Love is the foundation, but it doesn't neglect a negate that the fact that hope and faith are powerful tools. We need hope. Your faith can't even operate right without hope. Faith is the substance of things what? Hope. hope for. So hope is powerful. God is a God of hope and he wants to give us hope. I have hope for today. <laughs> hope is beyond. I'm not um, in despair, but I have hope for the body of Christ. I have a problem and I'm frustrated with preaching that always points out what's wrong with the church. Yeah. Oh, I hate it with all my heart, soul, and mind. Especially, I, had, I, I was talking to a co-worker, and they were saying that, you know, in America especially, people are the same around the world. So don't downplay American, America. Don't ever downplay America. You Don't downplay your country. Be glad that we're, we're, in, a, we're, we're, really are in, we're in a blessed country. And God's judgment is not just on America, it's on nations. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to point, oh, God's going to have to judge America like he did Sodom and Gomorrah. Not while I'm here. Not while I'm, here. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I'm of the seed of, right, of Abraham. Yeah, and, God, and God delivered Lot. So before he destroys America, he got to get me out of here. <laughs> so, so don't even, you know, God's judgment is in America. No, God's blessing is on America because we, we're here. The seed of Abraham. Abraham is our father. And we come from good stock. <laughs> um, so here we see that Paul is striving and there's a toil because he has his hope on the living God. Who is the savior of all people, especially to, of those who believe. He says, command and teach these things. People wonder what we should be teaching. We should be teaching hope and godliness and, and working out both spiritually and naturally. Uh, verse 12, let no one despise you for your youth. Don't let no one come down on you because you're young. How, what's a young person? Anybody under 100? <laughs> well, that's PD's <laughs> interpretation. But here Paul was, I mean, Timothy was in his 30s. But set the believer... But set the believers an example 
in speech and conduct and love and faith and purity. So we see that Paul is told, telling Timothy to be an example, to be a, a standard. Isn't that good news? Yeah. He says, be an example. Don't just preach against everything that's wrong with believers, but instead be a pattern or a standard for believers. That's pretty different, right? Instead of cursing the half bottle of water, show them how to do it. Show them how to be that glass of water that will bless somebody who's thirsty. He says, set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, and in purity. Let's take a look at this. If you're going to be a world changer, you got to be a, an example. That word example in the Greek, it, 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 it's like a, it's a pattern. And I remember my mom used to sew. And as she was sewing, that was, there was a pattern she used to put on the cloth. And she would follow the little pattern as an example. We should be someone to follow. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. So we should want to, people to follow us. Sometimes people curse followership. But it's nothing wrong with following people's faith and their godly examples. Come on. Pastor Sam, they've been married for 56 years. Yeah. That's an example of that, that marriages should follow after. Been married to the same person for 56 years. What? They must be godly people. <laughs> and they still love each other. We, we are to follow, be an example for others. And it says in speech. So how do you talk? What are you saying? Are you gossiping, complaining? <laughs> are you giving thanks? My speech is important. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. So I'm going to guard my mouth. Not only in my confession of faith, but my, 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 my expression of thanksgiving. I'm not going to complain. If I want to change the world, I, I want God's power on my mouth. And when we give ourselves over to God, we can, th th God's power will be on our mouths. Are you with me? Yeah. Oh, God, you don't have to be a preacher for God's power to be on your mouth. You can speak a thing and see change. You can post a thing and cause faith to rise in the hearts of people. You can give hope. <laughs> Say something on social media and it, it, hope comes in the hearts and minds of people. <laughs> I had the opportunity the other day as I was teaching in a Bible class at the school I serve in. I was talking about the power of God's word and how the Bible is God's word. It is the only book of its kind. It's still the number one bestseller. It, 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 it trumps everything. <laughs> I mean, it, it is the book. It's, it's natural and supernatural at the same time. And how if you just read it and meditate on it and get it on inside of you, it'll change your life. And students were like, I want to read the Bible with you. That was God's power on my words. The other day I served the opportunity to preach to the bunch of teenagers at chapel. And about 50 kids responded to the words that were coming out of my mouth. God's power grabbed their hearts. And, and some of them was coming up because of their friends, but others encounter the Christ. Because of the power of God on my words. You and I have the ability in our speech to change lives. We can destroy discouragement. We can remove, um, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, it's a time to build, time to tear down. With your words, you can tear down destruct destruction. You can remove the lies of the enemy through your words. So Paul says, be an example in your words, in your speech. Oh, may we have God's power on our words. Oh, as I talk now, the Holy Ghost is moving in your hearts. God's word 
I coming out of my mouth creates power inside people. It can take a heart, a stone heart and make it a heart of flesh. The Holy Ghost is moving on words. It's not just your prayers. Do your prayers. He sets the atmosphere. And through your teaching and preaching and encouragement and life giving words, he changes lives. You can change your kid's life. You can change your grandkids life. You can change that neighbor that's discouraged through your words. <laughs> Say my words have power. It changes lives, changes directions because of your words. You can, you can deliver somebody from poverty through your words. You can deliver somebody from hell through your words. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can deliver somebody from divorce through your words. Wow. You can heal somebody through your words. Yeah. Bring healing where there has been much hurt and much damage through words. You can cause restoration to yeah. come. That's enough. Let's go home. <laughs> We're word changers. We're going to change the world through our words. And it goes on and says this. In conduct your life, give them something to talk about. Through your life, your life can shine so bright that it causes darkness to leave. People don't know, but you can show them the way. Living the life, a life that shows the way to the Father. A life, Jesus was different. He just wasn't like a revolutionary, um, revolutionist. But he changed the way people saw God the Father. He changed the way people should live. I want to be like him. Jesus could go up to a person and says, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. They leave their livelihood to follow a, a man from Bethlehem. That's some power to get up and say, follow me. And I'll make you fishers. They leaving what they their security to follow you. That's that's some that's some type of power. It says in love. Be an example of love. So Christians should be some of the most forgiving people in the world. The world does not know forgiveness. <laughs> but we as believers do. We, we, we have sinned greatly against God. And we know we know the forgiveness of our sins. So we should be quick to forgive. We have much to thank God for. He forgave us for a lot. So we should forgive others. Be quick to forgive. Everybody say, be quick to forgive. Forgive your pets. Forgive your spouse. Forgive your kids. Forgive your neighbor. Forgive mom and dad. Forgive grandparents. Come on. Forgive. Walk in forgiveness. Sometimes if I find myself not receiving from God, I begin to declare, I forgive this person, I forgive that person, and I ask the Holy Spirit, help me. I forgive everybody. I release them. Are you with me? I forgive that man who caused my dad to die, get killed. Both, both my stepdad and my biological dad. I forgive those men. Forgive that woman who was instrumental in setting my dad up. I forgive her. Are you with me? Forgive the abuser who abused you. Forgive them. I release them from that and act like they never did it. I don't trust them, but I don't. I refuse to hold on to them. So Paul is telling Timothy, forgive, be an example in love. Show the world that they are love. If you love on a person in a way, they, love never fails. It wins every single time. Love on people. Walk with people. Cheer them on. Encourage them. Be a light. Be a source of joy. Be a source of encouragement. <laughs> We're to encourage the believer and, and evangelize the loss. <laughs> what if we just did that? Just focus on that. Instead of talking about what was, what's wrong with the church. <laughs> Let's talk about what's right with the church. The church is a source of hope for the world. The church is full of people who make a lot of mistakes, but their perfect savior is there. He's the head of the church. So I'll be slow to talk about his bride. You talk about my wife, I'll fight you. You talk about Jesus' wife, he'll fight you. Yeah, look at Saul. Saul was like, oh, I'm a, you know, he was persecuting the church. And, and Jesus appeared to him and says, why do you persecute me? <laughs> So let's not be let's be slow to, and not even put our mouths on the church. Right. Yeah, people are falling, make mistakes. So have we. Yeah. 
<laughs> so we all need Jesus. <laughs> and let's have mercy. Let's cover our wounded. Let's heal our wounded. Oh, these soldiers who have been serving and they made mistakes and I'm not excusing it, but we, we pray for them and we look for ways to restore them. When the last time we, st- we restored somebody who was, who was hurting, who walked off the path. Let's go restore them. God still loves you. There's still a call on your life. We're here for you to heal you instead of just shooting them like the rest of the world. The next one, it says, be an example in faith. So we should be people of faith and in, in impurity, holiness. And it goes on. It says, until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of scripture, to exhortation, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift. Everybody say, do not neglect the gift. It says you have. So inside of you have gifts and gifts and graces. Don't neglect those things, which was given to you specifically by prophecy when the council of elders laid their hands on you. So when hands were laid upon Timothy, there were spiritual gifts imparted to him. He says, don't neglect that gift. He says, practice these things. (laughs) So practice what? Practice these things that's been an example of a believer. And he says, immerse yourself. Ever say immerse It says immerse yourself in them. In other words, baptize yourself in them. Make them part of your everyday life. Assimilate to these things. Cause these things to be part of your DNA. So that all may see what? What's the next part? Your progress. People need to see you grow. (laughs) Do not stay the same. People need to see you grow in your graces. Grow in your, see, some people, give, they get happy. Oh, I just, I love my gift. I love, I'm called, I'm called, I'm called, I'm called, I'm called. Okay, grow in that calling. Grow. Just grow. <laughs> just grow. Be better at what you do and what God calls you to. Just grow in fatherhood and motherhood and, and being a spouse and, and, and being a worker. Grow in those things. Grow in the fruit of the spirit. Grow in the word of God. Grow in the gifts of the spirit. Grow in your mentality. Grow in your finances. Grow in your, come on. Everything about you grow. You grow, everything grows. Oh, yes, yes. And it says, verse 15, practice these things, immerse yourself in them so that all may see your progress. Verse 16, keep a close watch on yourself. Everybody say, keep a close watch on yourself. Close watch on yourself. Sometimes people are keeping a close watch on other people. Uh-huh. <laughs> but you need to see, you know, sweep around your own front door before you go around sweeping around somebody else's front door. <laughs> so keep a close watch on yourself. Then he says about your teaching or your doctrine. Watch what you believe. Sometimes you can get get flaky in your believing. Get flaky. I mean, I believe in encounters with God. And, but we got to be careful about making something a doctrine. Be careful about, you know. Of, of making your experience something that everybody should believe. <laughs> Just because you pray and you had you got slain doesn't mean that when I pray, I get slain. Are y'all with me? Oh, just because you prayed and this happened. It's not a doctrine for everybody to embrace. That's your experience. But I go by the word of God. My word, the word of God is my source of my faith, not your experience. Are y'all with me? And it says, persist in this, what keeping a watch on yourself and on your doctrine, immersing yourself in the teachings of Christ and, and, and being an example, public reading of scriptures and your gift. Practice these things. Persist in this. What, what's going to happen? For by so doing, you will what? Save. Oh, man. What? Save what? Both your, yourself and those, that's, those that hear you. <laughs> Let me say myself, not talking about salvation and saving from from hell, but from erroneous teachings, Mm -hmm. from getting off the faith. So as we think about becoming a world changer, you might ask, how, pastor, how do we change the world? How do we become a world changer? What does it mean to change the world? Does it mean to have a million followers on social media? Does it mean to to be an influencer 
what does it mean to become a history maker? Uh, again, seeds of greatness are in inside of you. Does everybody say, I have seeds of greatness, seeds of greatness. on the inside of me. God wants you to use you where you are with the people that you have influence over. So let's say if you don't have any influence at all, then you must be out of alignment with God's purpose for your life. Because where people is, the will of God can be accomplished. Let me say it again. Where people are, the will of God can be accomplished. Matthew 28, a passage of scripture that you're familiar with. We talked about the last three, four weeks. It says, go into all the world and make disciples. The Great Commission is a mandate to change the world. So as I declare the goodness of Jesus, what God did for us in Christ, that world of that person will change. Acts 1, 8 says, and you shall receive power. Everybody say power. power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall be a witness. A witness. As, as a witness, we change the world. We testify of the resurrection of Christ. If you're called and summoned by the court to be a witness to something that took place, your witness is able to influence the jury on whether or not this person should be declared guilty or not guilty. So you have the ability to change somebody's life <laughs> as a witness. Amen. As a witness. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Becoming a world. Everybody say becoming a world changer. Becoming a world changer. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I think it's selfish not to want to change the world. Not to make it better. I'm always praying, Lord, make me a blessing. As I was preparing this, I was like, Lord, make me a blessing to the members of KLM. May I add value to their lives. What a, pray, what a prayer to pray. Say, make me a blessing. That's, that should be a prayer of yours. Lord, make me a blessing to this family. Make me a blessing to my family. Make me a blessing to my friends. Oh, God, I pray that I am a source of a blessing. Oh, Father, I pray you will cause me to empower somebody else. First Corinthians chapter three. Let's look at verse five. It says, what then is Apollos? What is Paul's servants through whom you believe? As the Lord assigned to each. And it says, I planted Apollos what? Water. But God gave the what? Growth. So we have a part to play. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one. Each will receive his wages according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. King James says we are God's co-laborers. You are God's field or God's garden, God's building. How many know that we are working with God? God is, is in need of some co-laborers. God has a plan. He has his word. And we're to be laborers with him. We're working with him. You and the Holy Spirit can do more good than you by yourself. Yeah. Uh, I, it reminds me of Acts chapter, thir um, chapter 10, verse 38. And it says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power who went about doing what good. And healing all those who are oppressed of the devil. So the Holy Spirit was not given to you for you to sit, for you to do something. I'm telling you, I've done this before. It's not just behind the pulpit. I said, Lord, you gave me the Holy Spirit and he's the difference maker. The anointing is the difference maker. And he can put his anointing on me in such a way that I can accomplish the goodness of God in somebody else's life. Glory to God. He says we are. God's fellow workers. God is in need of some workers. God invites us to work with him to fulfill his will upon the earth. One person can make a difference. We can change the world one person at a time, starting with the people in your own house. You can change one person at a time. You pour everything you are into those people that God has given you influence over. You can empower them and strengthen them. It says, verse 10, according to the grace of God, 
given to me like a skilled master builder. I've laid a foundation someone else is building upon. Let each take care of how he builds upon it for no other for no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. One person can make a difference. Romans 5 tells us that it's through one man's disobedience that sin entered into the world. Through one man's obedience, righteousness was given or made available to all. I'm paraphrasing that. So we see Adam, because of his disobedience, he affected the whole human race. Your disobedience can affect a whole generation. Your obedience can affect a whole generation. Let's go to two more scriptures. Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. We're talking about becoming a world changer. We are called to change the world. What, what are you saying? I'm not saying that we have to have a million followers, but you can change the world by changing your life and changing one person at a time. You can influence people for the better. Acts chapter 13, verse 36, it says, For David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, fell asleep and was laid with his fathers and saw corruption. David served the purpose of God for his generation. What if we decided to serve the purpose of God for our generation and our generation? The Bible says in Romans 8 that the world is crying out for the manifestation of the sons of God. Will you step up and be the son, the son and daughter in the son for the world to see? The world is in need of some light. Glory to God. If you're going to change the world, you got you got to produce some kind of good works. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. Let's go over there. That's our last scripture. Let me remind you that Jesus said the works that I do, those who believe in me, the works that I do, you'll do also. But greater. Jesus did some great works. Jesus did some great works. I do believe Titus tells us that we need to have a zeal for good works. He saved us not by works, but to do some good works, to produce some good works. Your good works will cause the world to be changed. What are these good works? We'll talk about them in the days to come. Ephesians chapter 2, verses um, 8 through 10 says this. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Not as a result of works, so that no one can, may boast. For we are what? His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for what? For good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We should walk in what? In the good works. God, we are his workmanship. God, we are the result of God's grace working us and creating in us in Christ Jesus, he's made us brand new creation so that we can produce good works that God the Father beforehand planned that we should walk in them. You and I are called for good works. Say, I'm called for good works. I'm called to produce some good works. So, Lord, help us. Help us to, to produce good works. What are these good works? Uh, it, it could be as small as being who God made you to be, declaring, bringing joy, bringing hope, bringing faith, being an example. These are all part of good works. Acts of kindness go a long way. We'll talk about this in a second. Becoming a world changer is killing the giants that's holding you back. What are, what are some giants that may be holding you back? What are some things that are defying the God that you serve? Let me give you some practicality how to change the world. The first step in changing the world is changing yourself. You got to change yourself. Say, I got to change myself. Change. Michael Jackson says, change the man in the mirror, right? We got to change ourselves. How do you change yourself? I thought God's going to change you. You work with him. Yes. 
You put forth the efforts, spirit filled, spirit empowered efforts. <laughs> so it's not just me and God all by himself doing it. I work with God. St. Augustine, a man from Africa, the continent of Africa, he said that you should pray as if everything depended upon God and work as if everything depended upon you. You and God together can change you. <laughs> it is through the spirit that we put to death the deeds of the body. It doesn't mean the spirit does it. Me and the spirit together, we are a dynamic duo and we come against the works of the flesh. We go against it. You got to work with God. You got to give God something to work with. God doesn't do it just all by himself. You can't you don't even get saved or receive salvation. Just God himself. But you got to believe and you got to confess. Come on. <laughs> you got to repent. Yes, God graces you, but how many know just because you set up the atmosphere and you give the people the tools doesn't mean that they, they're using it? <laughs> together. Everybody say together. together. You and God together. You got to work on your marriage. Together. You got to raise your kids. Together with God. Come on. You got to do, you got a part to play. Yeah. Religion tells us that God does all the work. Uh -huh. He's provided the salvation. We have to receive the salvation. And we have to, uh, it says, what, what's that? Work out our soul salvation. You got to do some workout. You got to work out. You, you know, you're not going to develop your muscles just by having a membership. You may have salvation. You may have, have your hell insurance. But you got to work out the salvation. What he did in you, you got to work it out. It's called sanctification. Some spirit filled, spirit empowered. You and the Holy Spirit together can change your life. Procrastination. You and the Holy Spirit, he can, he can lead you to the stone that you can put in your little pouch. <laughs> and that one stone behind, with the power of God, David would never have killed Goliath if he didn't have the boldness. He didn't go and, but remember, he was being skilled and trained all along. He killed the lion and the bear oh, yeah. when nobody was watching. Nobody. Oh, yeah. So before you kill that big giant, you got to kill the little foxes around you. Yeah. The things that are keeping you, tripping you up. And then he decided to be bold. He says, God did it with me with the lion. He did it with me with the bear. Now he's going to deal, deal with me with this big giant. Ooh, yes, yes. So let me take what I'm familiar with that I know that works and together. My, my doing the natural and the power of God behind the natural took down the giant. Yes. It wasn't just God's power was available to Saul and the, and the armies of God. But they were so afraid they didn't do nothing. They didn't give God something to work with. I mean, no, we got to give God something to work with. We have to do our part. Um, my mom taught me this as I was studying one time at school and trying to, you know, pass a test. And I said, I was just going to go to bed and pray and, and, and trust God to do it. My mom said, you got to give him something to work with. He, if you don't study, there's nothing for him to bring to your remembrance. <laughs> if you don't open your mouth and speak, there's nothing for him to move on. Amen. You got to do your part. You got to do the natural and you got to do the spiritual and his power gets behind you. <laughs> well, Lord, you know, sometimes we get stuck in prayer, but it's what you do after the amen that ha really matters. You, you pray and it positions you and creates the environment. You say, Lord, give me, Lord, I need some more money. And God creates an opportunity for you to work overtime. I'll give you an idea to have a business. Oh, that was great. But, but if you don't do anything on it, nothing's going to happen. Everybody say nothing just happens. If you're going to become a world changer, you got to do something. You got to do what you don't want to do. Insanity is doing the same things over and over again, but expecting different results. Huh. I expect something to change. But if you don't do something naturally, it's not going to change. Let me give you this acronym for change. <laughs> change. In order to change the world, you got to have you got to put these things into, into place. The first one is C. C stands for. Claim your place in this world. Claim your place in this world. 
I went from having low self-esteem to having confidence. Romans 12 says, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought, but to think soberly according to the grace that's given you. No one can beat me being me. Come on. And no one can beat you being you. So claim your, sp your space. Don't be so shy and timid that it robs you from taking you taking your place. Stand strong in the grace that's been given to you. Romans 5 says, know who you are. Look people in their eyes and be with confidence. You can be a person with with um, that don't talk a lot. But when you open your mouth, people will listen. Be confident, confident in who you are. Take your place in the body of Christ. Take your place. If, you're, if, if somebody appoints you as supervisor, don't act like somebody who's under a supervisor. Don't let people under you take over your authority. You may delegate work, but don't delegate your authority. Don't give your authority away. Are y'all with me? Walk in your authority. I'm a child of God. That's the first authority. I got the name of Jesus. I know who I am. Even if you don't know who you are, begin to declare, I know who I am. What I say, God backs it up. Claim your spot in this. Discover your purpose and walk in it. Take your place in this world. Know who God made you to be. I'm telling you, know who God made you to be. Glorify your offices. If you're a male, be glad that you're a male. You're a female. Be glad that you're a female. Magnify who God made you to be. If the world can magnify the lies and the confusion they have over their gender, you should be able to magnify your gender over their lies. The truth is, no matter what you do, you are who God made you to be. If you're a male, nothing you can do can make you into a female. I don't care what happened to you when you're little and all the feelings you have. The, the grace on your life is who God made you to be. And when you try to do something that God never made you to be, you frustrate the grace of God. <laughs> Come on, I'll pray, to, pray this prayer. Say, Lord, Lord help, me help me to be who you made me to be. I want you to go to work and go to work and go to your house and stand in your place. Be secure who God made you to be. Do be unflinching, not, not movable. Don't move. Stand your ground. Give no place to the devil. You're not perfect. Oh, but I serve a perfect savior. And he's made me his child. I, I, I follow God. I follow the Holy Ghost. I'm a world changer. People, there, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of punks and wimps in the world. They hide behind social media. They hide behind titles. My title is not a child of God. That's who I am. <laughs> That's not my title. That's who I am. I am a child of God. <laughs> Say, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. Child of God. <laughs> Nobody can take that away from me. Nobody. Oh, God, he made, I am born again. <laughs> the greatest miracle I experienced. <laughs> I am a child. He calls me his own. My, I'm not forgotten. I may be going through hell, but I'm not forgotten. <laughs> a thousand to fall my right hand, ten thousand in my left hand, left hand. It'll not come nigh me. Oh, the world is going through a recession, but I'm going through the blessings. <laughs> I may be in the fire, but it won't get on me. Oh, I may be in Babylon, but I won't look like it. Oh, I stand apart. God has called me his child. I stand. Listen, be free from the opinions of others. Be set free. You are a big deal. It doesn't matter if you rejected by, by a, a group or a clique. You know who you are. I'm not better than you, but I know who I am. And I can help you to know who you are. I can change the world by just helping you to discover who you are in Christ. He made me somebody. I was a nobody prior to Jesus, and Jesus made me into somebody. I'm an image bearer of God. I bear the image of God. I'm above every other creation. I'm talking about humanity. I'm above every creation, birds and animals. I, I, they don't carry his image. I do. I do. <laughs> uh, listen, that, uh, <laughs> we're the only creation 
that sits at his right hand. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 1, 3. We've been seated together in heavenly places with him. Positionally, I'm at his right hand. Yes. Speaks of authority. Oh, yes. He says, he, he tells us in Genesis 1, 20, 26, he, he says, you know, I created you in my image and according to my likeness. And then he tells them to have dominion over the earth. Mm -hmm. We're the only creation that he told us to rule over the earth. Mm -hmm. Say, I'm a ruler. I'm a, ruler. I'm a king. I'm a, king. I'm, a I'm a lord. King of kings, lord of lords. Yeah. Who are these little lords? Yeah. Who are these little kings? Uh, king of kings. We'll be made kings and priests unto our God. Come on. We, we, as a priest, I can pray and change things. As a king, I can rule and reign. <laughs> I, I don't have all dominion, but I do have some dominion. Oh, I can rule over my world. <laughs> I, I represent him. When Adam and Eve messed up over the world, he's made us rulers over our little worlds. So I represent him. I could speak a thing and it'll happen. <laughs> Are you with me? Yeah. Rise up to the occasion, KLM, yeah. Yeah. and be who God made you to be. Be that blessing, that source of encouragement. You know, you're going through, oh, oh, thank God. He's with me in the valley. He's with me on, a, on that mountaintop. Yes. I'm going through, but God is with me. He is for me. He, the angels are gathering around ready to do the work for me in order for me to do the work of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. First place, first, claim your place in this world. Second, we talk a lot about this, but it needs to be reiterated over and over again, is humble yourself. Mm -hmm. If you're going to change the world, you got to humble yourself. Mm -hmm. The Bible says God resists the proud. It gives grace to the humble. I need to increase my humility as I'm changing the world. There are not a lot of humble people in this world. <laughs> There's some low self-esteem at work, which can be looked at as pride on the DL. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you mean? You, 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 pride, humility is walking in who God made you to be. Pride is not walking in it. So to say, I am not this, is really pride in the wrong way. Mm. It's not confidence. It's not, oh, they're so meek because they think they're nobody. That's not humility. Pride is believing a lie. Mm. And that low self-esteem, low self-esteem is the center of that is I. Jesus. Just like pride, it's I. So be who God made you to be. Stop downing yourself, dumbing yourself. Mm. Mm. <laughs> be who God made you to be. If you are, if you smart, be smart. <laughs> you know, at school sometimes, in high school, um, people don't want to be the nerd, but be that nerd in your group. Yeah, that's who I am. I, I am smart, and I have a command on the English language, and I, I, I do have good credit. <laughs> I'm not going to sit back when people talk about they got low credit to say, I got low credit too. <laughs> uh-uh, be who God made you to be. Are you with me? Humility is so important. And God will exalt the humble. He'll exalt you. As you humble yourself, he'll exalt you to change the world. Let's look at A. We're looking at the acronym change. A is answer the call. Answer the problems. Answer the call of God on your life. And be the solution for all the problems that God will allow you to encounter. Answer people's problems. In other words, provide solutions to the world's problem. I'm not saying take on people's problems, but as you change the world, I heard this years ago, the things that you're frustrated with is probably the thing that God called you to change or to provide answers to. So answer the call, answer problems. People pay people who solve problems. So let, let us be a solution for the world. Then the next one is, is something that you, we all can grow in. It's niceness. Niceness. Everybody say nice, niceness. Nice. Niceness is another way of saying kindness. Be kind to everybody. It doesn't mean that you have to like everybody in the sense of being buddy buddies with them. But be nice to everybody. Be kind to everybody. 
Develop a kind spirit. Being nice to people. Not rude, but being nice. Not allowing people to walk all over you, but learning to be nice. Be kind, starting with your spouse. Starting with your kids. Starting with your family and friends. And even a stranger. Learn how to smile. Bring joy everywhere you go. Um, Dr. Angel said to me just a few minutes ago, earlier on when I first got here, she said, I, I'm hearing things about you at that school. I said, huh? Something I posted on social media. And she said, there's a pastor over there. He, he's actually, I work with him at the clinic that I work at, counseling center that I work at. And she said, he said, Pastor Wayne's smile just brings a glow in the hallways. My smile is anointed. I, I was working before care last week and I was like, hey, how you doing? I talked to all the kids. Like, hey. How you doing? Good to see you. Good morning. God bless you. Amen. Ain't nothing good about the morning. <laughs> I'm telling you, hey, God bless you. I'm going to be Mr. Roger, Joel Osteen on steroids. Hey, today, every day is Friday. Hey, your best life now. Come on, let's learn. <laughs> What's wrong with this guy? <laughs> a couple of kids named Christians. There's at least three Christians I know in the school. I said, you're a real Christian. I'm speaking life. You shine so strong. You know, and I'm sitting there like, hey, have you ever thought, of, I, don't, I want to be an engineer and I want to be a cop. You can do both. <laughs> like, huh, I never thought about that. I said, you got these general electives you got to take care of. Why not take some of it and, and have another major? Oh, life answers. <laughs> Come on. You can put hope in people's lives. So smile. Part of your niceness, right? Smile. Even when you feel like crying. Michael Jackson got the revelation as a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> you know that song? I think that he redid for somebody else. Smile. Why not be the face of God to people? Smile. Develop that. Care as you go to Chick for Heaven. Smile. <laughs> there are, you know, in this role as an educator, you deal with parents and some of the parents came kind of hard a little bit. And I was like, well, they just need to do what they need to do. Instead, I, I remember, how can I serve you? So am I serving the student by not providing an answer? Going the extra mile. Some stores you walk in, they wow you. They walk you to the restaurant, restroom. They, walk, they, they go out of their way. Oh, oh we, we don't have that sauce, but let's figure this out. I'll be right back. Are you with me? What if everybody went out their, their way? <laughs> Go the extra mile. Jesus said, everybody said Jesus. Jesus. He's the master. Jesus said, if somebody asks you to walk a mile, walk two. <laughs> somebody asks to borrow something, just give it to them. Are you with me? That's what the master said. We want to be like Jesus. Oh, and, and we think we want to be like Jesus. We pray in the prayer doing worship. Oh, I want to be like you. I want to be like you. And then he gives you an opportunity. <laughs> it's a thing called emotional intelligence. It's a thing called emotional labor. I put on Christ. <laughs> and today I will act right. Today I will smile when I feel like crying. Today I'm dealing with some death, but I'm going to speak life. While I'm dying, I'm giving life. <laughs> when somebody needs a friend, I'll be the friend that sticks closer than a brother or sister. I learn how to keep their secrets and not tell the world. I cover them. On the niceness, also, is let the fruit of the spirit flow through you every day. I want to call these fruit. The fruit of the spirit, the forces of grace. Let these forces of grace take hold of you. Love. Let that be the dominant one. Joy. Come on. Peace. Faithfulness. Self-temperance. Let it be. Oh, that 
To be Christ-like is to have all the fruit of the Spirit in operation full force. Did y'all hear me? To be Christ-like is to have all of the fruit of the Spirit flowing through your life. Let's go over there real quick. Galatians, Galatians chapter 5. Uh, see, sometimes people think Christness is weakness. <laughs> or some may think that Christness is being like a mouse. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. You know, verse, um, let's look at verse 19 real quick. Galatians 5, verse 19 says, Now the works of the flesh are evident. So the works of the flesh is the devil on display. The devil is sexual immorality, impurity, come on, idolatry, sorcery, and strife, and goes jealousy, fits of anger, fits of anger. Sometimes people say, I got to cast the devil anger out. No, that's a fit. That's a work of the flesh. Let's jump down. Drunkenness is a work of the flesh. <laughs> Envy, orgies, all of that works Ooh. of the flesh. All right, they need a devil cast out. Diddy needs a devil cast. No, he needs to crucify, get born again and crucify his flesh. Yes. Teach. Are you with me? Teach. He needs to crucify his flesh. He needs to reckon himself dead to the cross. <laughs> dead to himself. Jesus bids people to come and die. Not just saying a prayer. When Jesus calls a man or a woman, he calls them to die to their flesh, to crucify their desires, to crucify their appetites, even their sexual appetites. Are you with me? Jesus calls us to put to death the deeds of the body. <laughs> All right, let's continue. Verse 22. Well, at the end of 21, it says people who do those things will not what? Inherit the kingdom of God. I'm a Christian, but I'm carnal. You're carnally your way to hell. You will not be among those who overcame their flesh. Because <laughs> heaven is for the overcomers. <laughs> Holiness is still right. <laughs> and you're not going to get those, those pearly gates. What about grace? Grace helps me to live right. Yeah. Okay, listen to verse 22. But the fruit, everybody say the fruit of the spirit is, and it's, notice it's a singular, but I believe it's like a cluster. Love being the center and the offsprings of that. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, or you can say niceness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the fruit of the spirit. To be Christ-like, Christ is all those things. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. How many know we need some self-control Christians? Control your emotions. Control your flesh. Control your mind. Everybody say, control my mind. You are not to allow your mind to wander off any direction. Control your thoughts. Get yourself together. Because you got somewhere to go. Come on. Heaven. <laughs> I want to go to heaven. Get, I'm getting myself together. I'm allowing the graces of the fruit of the spirit to flow through my life. And if you're going to change the world, people need fruit to eat. Don't give them the fruit of the flesh. Give them the fruit of the spirit. All right. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen, but it's all good. So G, 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 real quick. We got two more. G, grow everything about you. I've said this several times in different ways. Grow your faith, grow your mind, grow your influence, and above all, grow your walk with God. Just grow. Grow. Growth is now. It's time to grow up in Christ. It's time to grow up in your emotions. Grow up in your relationships. If I, all the relationships you have and it's always drama, you are the problem. <laughs> you may change your country. Change your county, change your house. You still got drama because it's going inside of you. Drama. You know, some drama filled people, they, they have the fruit of drama everywhere they go. Yeah. Gossiping, destroying relationships. Nobody likes them. Oh, everybody's talking about them. They're never OK. Uh, no, that's you. <laughs> God says, grow, grow up, grow out of that. <laughs> be childlike. but Be godly. 
come as a child, have a, a characteristics as a child of God, but be mature in the things of the spirit. Last but not least, evangelize. Spread the gospel, preach Christ. Look for ways to bring people. That's how we're going to change the world. Claim your place in the world. H, humble yourself. A, answer the call, answer problems. N, niceness. G, grow everything about you. And E, evangelize. If we just did that for the rest of the remaining of the year, the world will be better. Are y'all ready to change the world? God did not give you the word. He did not give you the Holy Ghost. He did not give you a pastor for you to sit and do nothing. Let's change this world. Let's make it better than it, it was before we got here. Let's show the world the, 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 that Jesus is real. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, let's lift up those hands. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, help us to change our world and change the world. We want to make a difference. Help us. Help us, God. God delights in us changing. The work of the Holy Spirit Evidence of that work is change. Mindsets change. Attitudes change. Motives change. You have the answers. You have the solutions to people's problems. But be the change first. Be what you want to see in the world. Embody the, that change. Thank you, Lord. Your greatest enemies, one of your greatest enemies, is the change that you've already made. Okay, you changed some, but God wants more. Don't look at what has changed as a result of you walking in your purpose. There's more. Remember the scripture in John 15, he says, he, he, the father prunes the branch, so that what? It can produce what? More fruit. So you have some fruit. If you're a child of God, you've produced some fruit. But how many know that's more? There's more. Father, we embrace the pruning process. We embrace the pruning process. Come on. We embrace, come on, you and God, talk, talk to your father. We embrace it. We, we, we change. We repent. Areas where we need to change. God, I, I pray you help us. Oh, God, help us. Thank you, Lord. Where there's procrastination, where there's laziness, where, where there, there is, um, you're satisfied. When God is calling you to be dissatisfied. A holy dissatisfaction with your life as is. So you can be more. Not just more stuff. That's not the, the goal of this message. Not more stuff. More change internally. That affects external behavior. Conduct. Lord, let, let the fruit of the Spirit be evident like never before in our lives. Mindsets that 
need to be changed. All the praying in tongues is for change. Change of minds, change of hearts, change of lifestyle. Thank you, Lord. You may say, I'm already like Jesus. You can be more. He, he is the epitome of what God is looking for in humanity. <laughs> Not just his, de not the deity, because he's God, period. But his humanity, the son of man, speaks of his humanity. He, he became who God designed. He's the standard, the example, the template for all other believers. He's the chief cornerstone that all other stones are called to be like. And it takes patience. It takes step. It's, it's moment by moment. Y'all do understand it's like next year. Oh, I, I've arrived. It's never arriving. But even as Paul said, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, striving for that which is ahead of us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. Say, Father, I thank you. I embrace change. In order to change the world, I change. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pray you are blessed today. Change is on us. I declare change. Change. When you change, your finances will change. When you change, your relationships will change. Change. May the world see change in us. Not chains, but change. Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for change. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I could pray for you and you can fall out and experience an encounter with God. <clears throat> but the real change is what you do every day. I can't lay hands on you for this type of change. I can break the powers of darkness over your life. But you got to do the work to repent, renounce and walk away and walk out of that. This is something that you have to strive for every day. Out of your relationship with Christ. So I, I need to grow. I need to grow, Lord. Help me. And he'll lead you. He'll guide you. He'll take your minds in a path that you never thought of. Areas that you didn't think that needed to be changed. He'll start changing. And you'll get victory on one area to the next, to the next, to the next. You'll go from victory to victory, faith to faith, strength to strength. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Don't love where you are. You know, they overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And they love not even what? Their lives to death. Don't love your life where it is. Love Jesus more to change. You may think you're okay. You may think you're a nice person. But there's more growth in niceness and kindness. You haven't seen kindness like the... You haven't seen where God wants to take you, how kind he wants you to make you. He wants to make you more... Like... He, a display of niceness that the world has never seen. And that's really just um, part of that is, you know, as you look at the fruit of the spirit, part of this, it, they overlap. Kindness, self-control, right? Self-temperance. Like, there, there has to be self-control. Do we control our anger? Do we control our mouths? Do we control our thoughts? Do we control our actions? <laughs> Do we control our anger? Say, no, I, I, I'm not going to allow this emotion of anger to dictate to me how I should react. But I respond with love. When I feel like screaming, I'll, I'll speak words of kindness. I sense the Holy Ghost right now, like never before, doing a work in us. A work. You know, Jesus is the great surgeon and he will 
remove bad things that shouldn't be there. Things that are harm, harmful. Just close your eyes. Let's take these, these few moments. Mm, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We embrace the surgery that you're doing on our souls. You know, there, there, there's things that we've been exposed to that we were never meant to be exposed to. We, we've, we, we've allowed s- some bad apples and some bad seeds to be placed in our souls. And Jesus and the Holy Spirit is going after those things. He's pulling those things out. So Come on, let's just pray in the spirit. This is what I hear as clear as day. Apology is needed. Some of the the change of some of y'all is you need to apologize to some people. But but it, it happened a long time ago. But the Holy Ghost is calling you on the carpet and it says apologize. Go back and make it right. Because that's a display of change. Well, I asked God to forgive me. But God says you need to ask somebody else to forgive you. Zandora Maka Zenda da Brete Cassandu Rebata de 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 an apology can cause it to get back on track. Acts of kindness. The thing that caused you to fall in love with that person in the first place. And going back to that, where, where that person, your spouse, was the object, it was the focus. Your focus and you studied them and you, you wanted to win them. You still need to win them. You still need to do the things that you got them to be in love with you. You prayed for a kid, you prayed for children, and the Lord blessed you with them. He did not bless you with them to, for you to mistreat them, for you not to understand why he calls them to be in your life. For you are the gardener, you are the overseer of that, that little one that soon will be in an adult. You are responsible for the seeds that you plant in them and the seeds that you water. Even as a gardener, watches over their garden, you need to watch over the souls of your own children. Zenda, removing the seeds that, and the weeds that should not be there and watering the good stuff so that they can, too, be a change that the world needs. And this is, I hear this, you pray for a friend and the Lord bless you with one. And you mismanaged that friendship. God is concerned about your things, but he's more concerned about he's more concerned about your relationships, your relationships. Do right by those relationships that he's blessed you to have. And some have even entered into the sin of partiality where you have had favorites. But you know God doesn't have any favorites. To be Christ-like is to treat all equal. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Bring everybody on the same level. No, you, there, you know there's different relationships and different um, levels of, of relationships but you treat and love people all the same. Don't treat the stranger better than you treat your own people, the people that's flesh and blood in your life, you know, part of your life. Don't treat them less than because they're related to you. That brother, that sister needs the same amount of mercy that you give a stranger to from you. 
Thank you, Lord. That's all I have. Honey, you have anything? Thank you, Lord. Did that minister to anybody? Amen. Amen. I, 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 let us just grow. You know, he's concerned about our things, but that's not on his priority list. His priority list is our relationships. We got to do right by our relationships, all relationships, and even the way you treat your enemies. Yeah. <laughs> how, how do you treat your enemies? You love them. Mm-hmm. You, you, you return, you know, they give you evil, you give them good. You do right by, you play, pray for those that despitefully use you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That concludes this week's message, and thank you very much for listening. For more information about Kingdom Living Ministries, please call us at 732-324-2200 or visit our website at kingdomlivingnj.org. Also, you can write to us by mail at P.O. Box 1854, Perth Amboy, New Jersey, 08862. And lastly, if you would like to partner with this ministry through your prayers or financial support, contact us via email. The address is partners at kingdomlivingnj.org. Our prayer is that this message has encouraged you to live out the kingdom of God daily in your life by your obedience to his word. Until next time, God bless you.